Which brings us back to this moment, to Yom Yerushalayim. A while back, I was interviewed by uh, dear friends of mine about the holiness of Jerusalem. And so I thought it would be meaningful to share that video with you so you can actually hear my words echoing off the walls of the holy city of Jerusalem. So here it is. Welcome to yet another episode in the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. Luke Hilton here with Caleb Waller. We are just outside the old city of Jerusalem at Jaffa Gate. We are waiting for Ari Abramowitz to arrive, but just a quick word. You probably noticed that we have this series progressing in Jerusalem, and that is so exciting to me because we get to see all of the history, but today we are bringing it up to the present day of why the Jewish people are here in Jerusalem. Ari Abramowitz is a phenomenal man, a man of great character, and a man who truly loves his city. And the things that we're gonna to touch on today have to do with the why. Why Jerusalem has been the center point for the Jewish people for thousands of years, and why still today, the struggle is fighting for the city. All right, I'm ecstatic to walk through the streets of Jerusalem where every single stone has a story and the history is so evident everywhere we walk. But I think to me, as a Christian walking here, it doesn't have near the depth that it does to a Jewish person. So to me, what's, what's the meaning of Jerusalem to you? What's the meaning of Jerusalem to me? <laughs> that That's a, a the better question, question is, what is, my, what is my meaning yeah. without Jerusalem? Asking what the meaning of Jerusalem is to the Jewish people is like asking what the meaning of breathing is for the human body. Okay. Okay. That's the, Jerusalem is the, the pulsating heart yeah, yeah, yeah. of the nation right. of Israel. It's who we are. It's, it's never left our consciousness even for a moment. We should just start before we even go through to say it's impossible to put Jerusalem into words. Wow. Without yeah. being, it, it's like the difference between reading a sheet of musical notes and experiencing a philharmonic orchestra. You need to, ex Jerusalem is an experience and Jerusalem has never left the consciousness of the Jewish people for 2000 years. At every moment when we build a new house, my partner Jeremy builds a house and the first thing he does when he moves into this completed home is scrapes away a portion of the wall. So there's an, a bare empty paintless portion of the wall that Jews do around the world because why should our house be built when God's house lies in ruins. The first thing we do after we eat, any meal, Al Naharot Bavel Sham Yashavnu Gambachinu Bezachreinu Etzion, on the rivers of Babylon we sat and we remembered Zion. Right. That's Uvenei Yerushalayim, that's the blessings after the meals, that's what it's all about, a Jewish wedding. Im Eshkachech Yerushalayim Tishkach Yemini. The first thing we do right before we celebrate is break the glass because the temple is destroyed. And then the, the groom says, Im Yerushalayim If I forget the O Jerusalem, may my right arm lose its cunning. What does that mean? Think about that. My right arm lose its cunning. It means without Jerusalem, we don't have our strength. We're not able to accomplish anything. Jerusalem is not just a city. It's, it's an idea. It's, it's a mission. It's the mission of the Jewish people. And I know it sounds like abstractly philosophical and spiritual, but sometimes the most spiritual, abstractly philosophical things are really the simplest truth. Right. And that's the simplest truth of what's happening here in Jerusalem and in the world, that this is a spiritual war that we're in and the truth of God will go to the entire world. Yeah, I'll tell you, when I think about being here in, in these stones of Jerusalem, when I actually allow it to internalize into my heart, I picture my grandfather, my great grandfather, my great great grandfather for thousands of years. If I was able to tell them, I'm living here, I'm walking through Jerusalem, they would they would faint they would not believe it's even possible and and, and I'm meriting to live it to experience it to walk through it and uh, that that's the miracle of what Israel is so there's a, a reason that God took the Jewish people out of Egypt on a circuitous route and not directly to Israel that it took 40 years because it's one thing to take the Jew out of the exile it's another thing to take the exile out of the Jew. So when we came into the land of Israel, when we conquered the, the Temple Mount, we clearly still had exile eyes because we passed right over the Temple Mount to the Western Wall. And we gave the keys to the Temple Mount to the Jordanian Walk because we weren't ready yet. We weren't there, but we're approaching the Yovel, the Jubilee year. 
from the liberation of Jerusalem of the Temple Mount. This is a turning point where the real true liberation that's happening isn't geographic, it's right in here. The only thing standing between the Jewish people and building the temple is right in here. The first verse in the Torah is Bereshit bara Elohim et It's God created the heavens and the earth. Why does it start with that? Our greatest commentator says, because in the end of days, the nations are gonna come against us and say, the land of Israel doesn't belong to you. And your answer should be, God of Israel created the entire world and he gave us the land of Israel. That is our right to be here. Israel should stand up to the nations of the world and say, Jerusalem is our capital. Jerusalem is the beating heart of our nation. That's where we serve the God of Israel, who is much more powerful than all of you put together. When you look at the forces of darkness and evil and repression that are turning against the Jewish people now, even more than ever, what are they turning against? Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem. So we know these are the front lines. This is what they want to take from us. This is what we need to fortify. This is what we need to stand firm and unwavering about even if the entire world is against us. That's what we need to do. And that consciousness that will force us to stand against the world and put, because we're gonna be afraid, there's fear in the world, but we can decide, does that fear, fear of man, fear of the nations, or fear of God? So Ari, overlooking the Kotel right here, what should the place of the nations and Christians be to the Western Wall today? And also, is there a place for the nations in the restored temple? So before I can answer what the Western Wall would be for the nations, it's important first to understand what it is for the Jewish people, because the nations are simply an extension. Just like in Judaism, we have priests, they're the children of Aaron, that are in some ways the intermediaries, the, the, the facilitators of our service to God in the temple. The Jewish people are, are an Am Kohanim. We're a nation of priests. So what the priests are to us, we are to the entire world. So the Jewish people, let me try to explain what the Western Wall is like. It's like, imagine a father that gets so angry with his son that he says, leave, leave, I never wanna see you again, go. And the son leaves. But then he just waits a second and, and he goes back and puts his ear to the wall and he hears his father crying. When we put our ear to the Western Wall, we hear God crying. That's why it's called the Wailing Wall, because of all the tears because this place is the conduit for all prayers. When Jacob was here on Mount Moriah, when he was here, he said, Ki im beit Elohim zeh, zeh This is the, the house of God. This is the gateway to heaven. Yerushalayim, has, it ends in ayim. And only a word ends in ayim in Hebrew and it has an equal and exact opposite. Why does Yerushalayim have an equal and exact opposite? There's Yerushalayim Shalmala and Yerushalayim Shalmata. Jerusalem the spiritual and Jerusalem the physical. The two worlds come together. So when we put our hand on that wall, we're actually able to encounter the world. We can feel the tears of all of humanity because they've gone through this place right up to God. What is, we've been speaking this whole trip as we're walking, that it, the redemption is really about a consciousness, an awareness. And what is that awareness? Prophet Isaiah says it, Chavakuk says it. He says, until the knowledge of God covers the earth as water covers the sea. It's like the story of two fish in a fish tank and one says to the other, I don't know, do you believe in water? Because we're so immersed in godliness, sometimes it's hard to see it right before us. And that's what the Temple Mount represents. That knowledge that God will push from our heads into our hearts, it will permeate all of existence to the degree where we'll be able to take this gun right here and beat it into a plowshare. There will be no need for hatred or violence. There will be no need for jealousy or sadness or grief. That's what this is all about. That's what the Temple Mount is about. It's universal. It's about bringing God to the world. The prophet Zechariah, Zechariah said, V'nilvu goyim rabim ha'lashem bayomahu, and the righteous of the nations will attach themselves to the house of Israel on that day. And in this day when the whole world is against us, for all of those around the world who are standing with us, who are literally being a comfort to us, that we're not alone. For those of you who are doing that, you're attaching yourself to the house of Israel. And I want to invite all of you, implore you, please come to Jerusalem. Come and experience it because we don't only consider you our friends, we consider you our family. And when we're praying for that temple to be rebuilt, we're praying for you to be right there by our side. I hope it was okay that I shared that with all of you. Um, I really felt like I was able to express my heart there. And I just want to apologize 
Uh, clearly, time has gotten away from me, and we're going a little bit longer than usual. I hope that's okay. But, um, but uh, you know, let's just bring it back together now. We're ushering in right now the holy day of Yom Yerushalayim, and we're connecting to each other from Yerushalayim. It's hard to imagine. It really is to, to let it sink in how far we've come and how close we are to the final redemption. And I think we all feel that what we're doing together here in this fellowship is a part of that journey towards the building of the temple and the ultimate redemption. And I'll tell you, it, it hit me this past Shabbat after reading the Torah portion in the synagogue, right? We went to the Haft Torah. Now, it's hard to read the Torah portion, this one, and not to feel down and to feel sad, because unfortunately and painfully, when we read through these painful and horrific admonitions, at, at this point in time, they sound less like threats and more like an accurate description of the last 2,000 years of exile. There isn't even a single one of these dark nightmares that hasn't come true for the Jewish people. But as I was feeling down and thinking about all of this, we arrived at the words of Jeremiah, and I felt comforted because of all of you. You were what came to mind uh, when I read the words of the prophet Jeremiah. You and this fellowship. For the prophet Jeremiah says in the very first verse of the Haftorah, Hashem, my strength, my stronghold, and my refuge in the day of travail. To you nations will come from the ends of the earth and say... Our, our ancestors inherited falsehood, futility that has no purpose. Can a man make a god for himself? They are not gods. Therefore, behold, I inform them upon this occasion. I shall let them know of my hand and my strengths, and they shall know my name is Hashem. That's from the Haftorah, from the book of Yirmiyahu. And I doubt there's one of us in this fellowship that doesn't identify with that to some degree, that has not had to shatter some sort of falsehoods that we've inherited from our ancestors, really at no fault of their own. But we've had to shatter these falsehoods in our quest to connect with Hashem in truth. And that is what Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is the city of truth. And by seeking Hashem with all of our hearts, I want to bless us all that we may be a, a part even a small part, I'll take it, a part of the building of the third and final temple in the holy city of Yerushalayim. May it be rebuilt fully and completely soon in our days. Amen. This highlight was taken from the Land of Israel Fellowship. Every week, hundreds of families from literally around the world come together on our live Zoom sessions to strengthen each other, to inspire each other, and to learn Torah from the land of Israel, in which we connect the dots between the Bible, the Hebrew language, and the confusing events of our times. Go to www.thelandofisrael.com backslash fellowship or click on the link below to join. Thank you.